Okay, so now we'll discuss a few stations regarding first speculum examination. We have got one station that is uh, teaching of first speculum examination and recently they started asking one more way we have to take cervical smear. Yeah, so what we'll be doing now, we'll be discussing uh, both these things, how to do first speculum examination and how to take smear. Alright, so of course in this uh, you can wear the gloves, you will be getting a new speculum, new speculum. So you can open it and drop it in the tray. So drop it in the tray and after that you can throw this in the waste bin. Alright. <clears throat> so what we have to do first, as you know when you are doing any teaching station, you have to have a good rapport with our colleague. Yeah, so make a good rapport, assess his knowledge, how much he is aware of this perspective examination. Yeah, usually in our station in Fabtu, they don't uh, know much about the perspective examination. Then we have to give a brief explanation of perspective examination and then we have to teach them. Yeah, so perspective examination, like why we do perspective examination. It is actually for uh, examination of the internal and external genitalia organs of the female. Yeah. Uh, that is why we do perspective examination. From externally, if you look for it, there is any redness, any discharge, bleeding, or any ulceration. Yeah. And internally, we have to look for the cervix, uh, whether it is slit-like, whether it is round. We have to look for the uterus. We have to look for the vaginal walls, and we have to look for the any discharge bleeding coming out from the cervix. If there is any atropion or any ulceration in the cervix. So these are the things actually we are looking for. Yeah. So you can uh, just explain a bit, uh, not in uh, like full detail, because. Uh, uh, again, you know, like it's like eight minutes station. So just give him brief introduction about uh, this perspective examination. Why we do? As we know, this is uh, as we're examining the private area of the patient. So we have to be very gentle, and of course we have to have a chaperone with us. Yeah. So mention it to the lady. Mention it to the. Uh, patient what we are going to do we have to explain the procedure we have to tell the position of the patient any requirement for the station yeah for example in this we always tell the patient we want you to undress below below the waist we have a chaperone to ensure your privacy yeah and what should be the position in perspective is examination the position is we tell the patient to lie down comfortably on the back bring the heels as much as close to the bottom yeah, bend the knees and bring the heels as much as close to the bottom and the knees fall apart on either side of the bed. That is the position in this particular station, first speculum examination. Alright, and one thing, whenever we're doing first speculum examination, you're taking smear or doing antenatal examination or bimanual examination, anything, make sure you tell the patient to empty the bladder. Very important, don't forget that. Yeah. So one thing in uh, perspective teaching that we have in part 2, there is no patient actually. So what we are doing, we are talking to our colleague. We are talking to our colleague and we are explaining all this stuff. Yeah. So this is a thing. And one more thing I want to tell like if uh, if we have to take smear, this is a brush for smear. This is usually we'll get a brush in the exam. That, that is in the cervical smear station. Uh, for example, if you have to explain about the smear, there are some contraindications that we have to uh, make sure we rule out. Uh, for example, if the patient, uh, if she is pregnant, or if there is active menstruation bleeding, if she, or uh, any bleeding, or you can say recent sexual intercourse or usage of any spermicidal gel, these are actually the contraindication of cervical smear. I'm repeating again. Just, uh, these are the contraindication for cervical smear. These are not the contraindication for first speculum examination. Yeah, so these are not the contraindication for first speculum examination. Of course, and when the patient is coming to us with the bleeding, uh, of course, uh, we will be doing first speculum examination. These are the contraindication for smear. We don't usually take smear if these are the contraindications. Yeah. So what to do? First is the first is inspection. Yeah. So first we inspect. Uh, we are looking for if there is any redness, any swelling, any scar marker, any previous surgery, or if there is any uh, bleeding discharge coming out from the vagina. Yeah. After that, what we have to do, use your index, index finger and thumb and retract the labia like this. Yeah. And then it will actually, you can do the better inspection. Fine. After that, what we have to do, you can always tell the patient to do cough. What you're looking for, you're looking for if there's any vaginal prolapse. Yeah. So tell the patient to cough and we're looking for any, any prolapse. Fine. After that, what we have to do, uh, usually we do this examination when we have a good source of light. Yeah. Because otherwise uh, nothing will be visible inside. Yeah. So after that, what we have to do is, uh, we have to have this uh, speculum. So usually they are giving this kind of uh, speculum in the exam. Yeah. So there is a, a valve that you can tighten the screws if you want. And you have to hold it in this way. So that the control is in your hand. Whether you want to, when you want to open, when you want to close, it is in your hand. So this is how we hold it. Yeah. So make sure when we are inserting this for this perspective examination, make sure, make sure you lubricate it well. So 
you lubricate it well, you have all done this uh, attraction and then you have to insert it. You usually insert it in this way and when you're going in, you have to rotate it upward. Yeah, let me show you what we do and how we do. We go this way and we rotate it like this on the up. And then we open these blades and fix it like this. So this is how it is done. And after that, you can see the cervix, you can see the position of the uterus through this. This is what we do in real life. So cervix, actually you can see cervix, two types of uh, cervix you can see. Maybe it is circular or sometimes it is slit-like. So it can be circular or slit-like. Circular meaning the patient is nulliparous or you can say patient hasn't given the birth vaginally. Yeah. If it is slit-like, it means she has given birth vaginally. Yeah, so that is the meaning of this. After doing this, you can comment on a lot of things. You can comment on the cervix. You can comment on whether it is uh, circular, whether it is slit-like. You can comment if there is any uh, redness, any bleeding, any discharge coming out from the cervix. You can comment if there is any ulceration or any atropion on the cervix. You can comment on all these stuff. Yes, after that, what we have to do? Like, for example, if the station says you have to take smear, but as you know, in perspectum examination teaching in class 2, there is no smear that we have to do. So in that, Simply do this and just take it out. But if we have to take smear, just do the other station as well. As I mentioned, we have a new station recently where we have to take cervical smear. So we have this brush. So what we have to do in the smear, you have to insert this brush inside and you have to rotate it five times 360 degree. You have to rotate it nicely like one, two, three, four, and five. So you have to insert it and you have to rotate it five times, five times, yeah? So just go in and one, two, three, four, and five. After that, you take this out. Now it depends which smear you want. Uh, you can take uh, like thin prep smear or you can take short part. Usually what they have in the exam, you may see two bottles. So maybe it's written thin prep on one, another one is short part. So which one we are going to take? So for example, if this is thin prep, so what you have to do, this brush, you have to drop like 10 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's it. So this is your thin prep. In the exam, actually, there will be some solution there in these bottles. So simply 10 times, if you drop it, that is thin prep solution. Other one is sure path. If you have to take sure path, for example, so what you have to do, if you can see this brush, just take off this brush, simply like this, and drop it in the bottle. That's it. So this is how you take... Uh, short path. So thin prep 10 times, short path, you just drop the brush. So what we are doing, we are doing, we are rotating this brush 5 times 360 degree in the, uh, when we are taking sample and after that, uh, uh, for thin prep, we are just dropping it uh, uh, 10 times, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, for short path, you drop the brush. Yeah, after that, we can throw in the waste bin. Yeah, what we have to do after that, now the, another technique is how to take this out. It is very, very important, how to take this out. First of all, loosen this, uh, yeah, and after that, when you're taking it out, make sure the blade should not close completely. Because if it closes completely, it may pinch the patient's skin. Yeah, and if it's open widely, like then again, it's uncomfortable. So we have to be very careful. We have to take it out the way we have inserted. So we'll loosen it and then take it out slowly, slowly rotate it and take it out. And like this, as you can see, it is still open a bit. It's not completely closed. Otherwise, it will pinch the patient's skin. So after that, we can visualize, we can see, we can inspect if there is any discharge and bleeding. Yeah. After that, that's it. We can just drop it at the waste bin. Done. Yeah. And after that, we can offer wipes to our patient. We can tell the patient, thank you so much. And have a nice day. And also we can tell, for example, if you have taken the smear, so we can tell that uh, we are going to send these uh, uh, sample for the investigation. And uh, we can tell the patient that you will receive the reports uh, maybe around uh, in one week or in few days time. All right, so this is about the sperm speculum and about the cervical smear, how to take cervical smear, yeah? So just see in the station what exactly they're looking for. If they want you to take cervical smear or if it is only per speculum examination and do it accordingly. It's a very simple station and uh, I hope it is, uh, this video is useful. Thank you so much.